Let's move on now to the business news with Nicholas Poynton, who joins me in the studio. Nicholas, let's talk about the Provincial Growth Fund. The first loan has been repaid. Who's yeah, that? I guess it's nice to have... This is maybe some good news following everything <laughs> we've just heard. That loan was to a Northland-based horticulture business that grows berries. So it received $2.3 million from the scheme that was to rapidly expand its high-tech hydroponic berry growing operation throughout the region. It appears to have been... and. Yeah, I should say it does appear to have been very successful. Yes, they did pay back that money back last week. But the company also took on an extra 56 full-time staff. And speaking wow, with... that's a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly yeah. what I thought. And so speaking with the Provincial Development Unit, they're the ones who actually administer the money from that big fund. That I spoke to the head today. He says he's incredibly pleased with this result, not just because the money was paid back, but because he says it's had a meaningful and lasting impact there on the region and he says to, to, to top it off there's also been 180 seasonal jobs will be created every year that's throughout the growing season there and the development unit it did talk up about how this was a really successful and calculated investment and I think well if that is the case it makes you wonder why didn't a bank step in and lend to this business and to that the PDU head Robert Pigu, Pigu, who used to work for a bank, he told me that sometimes banks reach a point where they don't want to continue to lend to a particular business, a particular industry, or a particular region. And businesses that have the ability to scale up like this one here, they're the ones that end up missing out. And he says that's the importance of the scheme. He says to the state, it's been uh, it's been truly successful. And in terms of those other business loans, so this is one of 100. Uh, that the total amount that's been lended to business is about 600 million dollars. We're not. Sh we've been told that some of them they are repaying that loan. Where uh, no one else has paid it back yet. We don't know when those other loans will be completed. The detail around this has been particularly thin. But Pigu does anticipate that there will be some businesses which will fail to repay back that money. His the way he explained it was like, look, banks when they loan to businesses, they do accept that not all of them are going to uh, pay that money back. But I guess people do feel a little bit differently about it when it's public money that's been lent to these businesses. So we'll be keeping a close eye to see what happens here. Interesting. Hey, and this was also. Interesting, uh, an unusual partnership, arguably, uh, ACC and Les Mills. What's going on I there? I know, this did come as quite the surprise, but ACC has acquired an 18% stake in the fitness company Les Mills International. And we weren't told how much this was for, but a spokesperson from ACC did tell us that the, the, the organisation does tend to invest between 30 and $100 million when it makes an investment, so no small amount. And it's worth clarifying that ACC, which is just one of the biggest institutional investors in this country, is up there with the super fund, it has not invested in Les Mills New Zealand. That's the people who operate the gym chains. No, they have invested in Les Mills International, which create the fitness programs used in the gyms. And apparently that's the really profitable part of this business. And I must say, it did come as a huge su surprise to me that there was so much there was so much value in the intellectual property in these gym yeah, you programs. You can go to a gym in the UK or LA or wherever and work out to a Les Mills program. Program, Ian. Look, they are worth a lot. And as part of this deal, we've learned that two directors from ACC will be on the board of Les Mills International. Tell us what else has been happening on the, well, the up and up. Um, yeah, well, look, it has been a bit of a rocky day of trading. Okay. There was a strong period early this morning. That was after a handful of companies put out some financial results. One was really positive. That's for the software accounting firm Zero. Huge half-year profit for them. A so-so, oh, a pretty good result for Infratil. That's the infrastructure investor. And a disappointing showing for the seafood company Sanford. Their words, not mine. But we did notice a bit of a turn later in the day during late trading that's on the back of the news probably that there is an unknown case of COVID-19 in the community so it's closed up just by about four points to 12,670 our dollar is at 68.8 US cents 94.6 Australian and 52 British pence thanks Nicholas Nicholas Poynton with our business update there